My intuition is telling me there'll be better days. Yeah. Guys, what is up? Welcome back to the Daily Dose. Uh, and guys, today uh, I'm going to be doing a little bit of a different video. Usually I'm giving you an update of my day, the music different things like that but today I'm going to be using this platform um, to talk about something very important um, something that a lot of people don't know that they have uh, and secondly something that people don't take very seriously um, and that is anxiety anxiety can form or come in two different forms you can have very very mild anxiety something like not wanting to read out loud in front of a class um, or uh, we have a severe form where you don't leave your house, you don't leave your bedroom for months on end. Um, and the reason I want to talk about that is because I myself um, have sort of gone through anxiety, a very mild form I think, or maybe like a, kind of like a moderate form of it. Um, I wasn't aware until recently. Um, I started teaching clinical psychology um, to students at my college. Um, I also did a mental health um, qualification last year. And after reading that, you know, those texts, I'm actually delivering sessions on uh, mental health awareness and different things like that. Um, I've actually discovered that I went through anxiety uh, and I still do now and again. Um, and just, just to let you guys know, this isn't me trying to get subscribers, followers, shares, whatever. A lot of YouTubers have used this platform for those purposes, those evil, evil purposes. I'm not here to do that. I'm here to create awareness of it and hopefully help you guys get through anxiety. Now, my backstory um, for anxiety, probably like when it started was probably in school um, where I wouldn't really talk to students and, and people say, oh no, you were just a shy kid. I know what shyness is um, and when I was younger, like really, really young, like probably like, f let's say five to 10 years old, I was a really cheeky child. Um, I was quite outgoing at that point. I used to talk to all my cousins, my aunties, whoever, like random strangers I used to talk to, like what, like say morning to random people on the way to school. Like that was, that was my personality. But then when I hit secondary school um, is when I started not wanting to talk to people, um, not wanting to go to school, um, not wanting to go onto the playground for lunchtime, break time, whatever. I'd stay in classes. I would go to the music block sometimes. Um, and that, that happened from probably from about year seven to year nine. Um, I went through that. And that was probably like quite, like it was in the middle. It wasn't mild, it wasn't serious. It was like, it was in the middle. Um, and then that, that happened throughout. And then year 10, 11, I joined a basketball team. I got a little bit more confident, but I still had forms of anxiety. So obviously my basketball team, there were students, some of my friends that I used to go training with three, four times a week, go to the park, play basketball, but I would never talk to them. It was, it was really weird, but was, I was anxious to talk to them. Basketball was my way of expressing myself. Um, and then just through college, A-levels, things like that. Yeah, my confidence went up. I started going to the gym. I got a bit bigger. Um, my friends started noticing that, so they wanted help, you know, getting bigger and things like that. But still, I carried that whole thing around where I didn't want to talk to people. Um, I just, even, even when family members come to my house now, um, like back then, I used to, if I'm, if I'm upstairs and there's family members, like if there's more than three, four of them, I don't want to go downstairs. And it's not because I don't want to say hi to them. It's not because I'm rude. It's because I get anxious when I walk into that room and they all stop and they just look at me. It might be silly, it might be something very, very trivial, but for me, I get anxious. Then you have to say hello to every individual person, and like I stutter, I don't say things properly. Um, and I just want you guys to know that it's okay to do that. Um, it's okay to be anxious. Um, it's, it's, it's something you can't control. Even now, I'm a 26 year old man, and I do get anxious, you know, a lot of the times, but my current role does not allow me to follow through with being anxious. So for example, I have to present, um, I have to present tutorial sessions to 16 to 19 year olds. And if they smell fear in you, they smell, if they, if they get a sense of me being anxious, they will eat me alive. And that's what students do, they, they smell fear. Now I can't let that, you know, get, get to me. And obviously if this student's watching, then listen kids, you're not gonna get to me. But 
the thing is yeah you do feel anxious sometimes um and like even yeah as like at work at home sometimes there's days where um i'll see people i know i've known for years but i just won't say hello to them because i get anxious um and as i said i it was never a severe 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 form of anxiety at all um it's very mild even now it's very mild um i think where it stopped for a long period of time was in university um is because i um i did something that scared me and that was literally the first night everyone's moving in i knocked on every single person's door in my halls and asked them okay so are you you know hi my name's Asan. what's your name da -da -da -da. introduce myself are, are we you know are you guys getting out tonight etc so i started that off um usually i wouldn't do that usually my anxiety would kick in and i would over analyze or overthink about a situation and say to myself that they're not gonna like you why are you gonna go and talk to them or you think worst case scenario that's another form for me i think worst case scenario about everything and anything even something simple as driving i've been driving for the last six seven years and thank god like you know nothing has happened not been any crashes anything like that but it's almost like when i'm visualizing my journey it's like oh this could happen this could happen what if i forget to drive things like that it will it, they will get to me um and the ways i've tackled it is as i said in university i knocked on the door i did something that scared me and that's what's help, been helping me along the way i've been doing some things that have been scaring me to take me out of my comfort zone and take the anxiety out of me so meeting new people is probably one of the most scariest things you'll ever have to do in a town or a city um, for the people you don't know so university that was for me work the world of work is another crazy crazy place um in the beginning i come across as very quiet um my manager has called me a thinker i i am a thinker i overthink things um but it's it's definitely anxiety um now because i'm so comfortable where i am i'm very good at talking to people now i wasn't before um i would literally not want to talk to people i remember uh, me and my friend uh, went over to one of his friends' house and literally he was he was the nicest guy in the world man and I was just there being a weirdo. I wasn't talking, it wasn't anything. He was like throwing questions at me and I was just giving him one word answers or yes and you know, no answers. Um, so I just I just wanted to highlight those aspects of my life um, and let you guys know that anxiety is a real thing. It does happen to people and there are ways of, of tackling that anxiety. And it's literally just doing things that scare you. It's doing those things and seeing what the outcome is gonna be. So for me, it was YouTube, man. Like, this is one of the scariest platforms to be on because there's no filters. People, will, if they don't like you, they don't like you and they'll tell you. Music was another one, man. If people think you're a whack rapper or a whack lyricist or a whack singer, people will tell you, and I've had that. And I've, I've learned to take that on the chin and carry on. At work as well, man, you, people will beef with you at work for no reason. And work is a place where you get, I get the most anxious is because you start over analyzing a situation so for example you get an email from a colleague or something and and they're trying to you know get you into trouble or you know they say that you're in trouble da, 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 you shouldn't have done this straight away you start thinking oh am i gonna you know am i gonna have this job tomorrow um why is that person you know having a go at me why have they added this person to the email etc it's just diff different different things that go on in your mind um and ways that i've learned as i said ways that i've learned to tackle it is um, to not just not think about those things. Just try and completely put my mind on something else. With this YouTube, um, like there's days where I don't upload it's because I'm anxious. I care about what people think of me, which now has stopped because I'm literally doing this video to tell you guys that this is what I'm going through, what I've been through, whatever, but I'm gonna carry on doing my thing. Um, and as I said, this isn't me trying to get the views, get the subs, get whatever. It's just me having a conversation and hopefully reaching out to you guys that have gone through anxiety before or are going through it better days are coming i promise you all you have to do is know that there's different forms of anxiety um and it's i'm not saying it's an easy fix but you need to start getting out of your comfort zone little by little so if you're say for example if you're not making friends in school you've just started school year seven or grade seven whatever if you just started college you're not making friends what you need to do is slowly slowly start joining in on conversations 
like in university for my masters um i was in in masters is weird like undergrad you live in uni you meet people etc masters was re very weird because i was commuting i didn't really know anyone on my course there were small sessions um and it's kind of like people had already had their own little friendship group so i remember my um the first few months you had two gentlemen um that were from nigeria um and they knew each other so they were they were friends and then you had um this girl from london and this other girl who lived in london but she was american so and she loved american people so they made a connection there was another girl um who lived right around the corner from this other girl so they made a connection so it was like all these different people making connections you had two older ladies that made a connection because they talk about kids whatever i in that moment had no one because i used to go in do my work go home i didn't want to make any contacts uh network with people etc because of a anxiety and b i thought I'm commuting, I don't need to talk to anyone in London, meet anyone in London. But then one day I thought, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna make it um, one of my goals today to talk to someone. And I literally, I think the two girls, the American girl and the girl from London, were talking about Drake and his concert. And uh, I'd got tickets for it. So I was just talking about, talking to them and just saying, oh, you know, I think she was, I think she was one of the Drake's lines. It was, I think it's um, somewhere between iconic and psychotic somewhere between I want it and I got it like she was doing the lyrics to one of his songs and um I was like oh that's that's Drake so like I started a conversation like that started talking to her and now man like she messages me um what like you know regularly to see how I am I see how her uh, she's traveling a lot so it's like it's amazing that connection that that just came from that one little thing so if you're having trouble making friends having trouble talking to people that is one way of trying to sort that issue out um and trying to sort that out for yourself um I'm, I'm gonna stop rambling now um, I just want to address anxiety man and hopefully as this channel goes on with regular content I'm gonna try and address other things um, this is honestly in all honesty this is the only thing I've really gone through um, there's nothing really else that I can say that has affected my life it's just anxiety man just literally being crippled when trying to talk to someone or trying to do something that I enjoy because because of what people will either think of me or what I'll think the outcome will be when that isn't the case um, if guys, if there's anything I've missed um, in terms of the anxiety, if there are any questions you guys would like to know, please leave a comment in the section below and I will try and answer them for you. As I said, all this stuff that I'm giving is just advice. It's not any medical um, medical advice. It's, it's, it's just things that have worked for me. So just talking to people little by little. Um, in terms of like leaving your house and stuff, just, just do it in baby steps. Like, for example, if you've got really severe anxiety and you're... Um, you know and you're you literally in bed all day then i don't know if that's like your monday tuesday for you then maybe on a wednesday you get changed um maybe on a thursday you just you you step outside your house or maybe the friday you step outside your house and go for a little walk just do it in baby steps um there's a guy called carl vernon um that came into our college come twice now to talk to first it was the staff and then the students um and he used to suffer from very severe anxiety and now when I talk to, like, if you meet him now and you talk to him, it's literally like, you, you think he's lying. Like, he's one of the most confident people um, you've ever met. Like, he's got a book out. Um, I'll leave a link in the description box below. Make sure you check that out if you, you know, if, if that would be any use to you. But yeah, he, he gave some really good advice. Um, he goes, there's a lot of, like, escapism. There's a lot of things people escape to, to get away from their anxiety. For me, it used to be PlayStation. I used to play it all the time. Um, and then mine used to be just being by myself and I still enjoy that I still enjoy my own company but then when I'm with other people I'm about 95% good but there's that 5% on the back of my mind thinking you know there's certain anxiety feelings I feel a bit anxious and there's certain things I won't say or certain things I'll say that won't make any sense so if you guys have ever talked to me before and I've come up with something completely random or weird that's because of that's because of anxiety but guys I'm gonna stop talking there um, hopefully you guys will get something from this video. Um, hopefully when I make another video like this, I'll be talking about different mental illnesses. Um, that's because I've really taken, I really took an interest in them in university. Um, I've got a degree in it and I've not really used it for anything. I've started teaching clinical psychology, as I've said, but I mean, in terms of really giving advice and really trying to help people, as I said, the music, I'm trying to help people with social experiments. This channel, I'm trying to change things. So hopefully, you know, reaching out, using a different um, topic or a different, reaching out to a different audience will hopefully help me. 
So guys, that is the video today. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that like button, share and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys hopefully tomorrow when I release another vlog. Peace. And, or, you know, maintaining a mental state which is peaceful. When it gets to day 31, E-Day, you'll see them arguing about the quickest route to Heathrow Airport. What the hell, man? Who cares? Who cares about the quickest route to Heathrow Airport? Oh, brother, if you take the M25, jump onto the M40, then jump onto the M6, you will get to Manchester quicker. No, no, 